Welcome everyone. Today finds me in my kitchen where I'm going to attempt to make the Walt Disney World cheeseburger spring rolls, but we're going to do it a little differently because I'm going to try to do it in an air fryer. Welcome everyone, Mark here from the Average Meat Channel, and you heard right, I'm going to try to make the cheeseburger spring rolls. If you've ever been to Walt Disney World and you've gone through Adventureland, maybe you've had a chance to try the spring rolls. I like them. There were times I didn't think they were great. They were a little greasy, a little oily for my taste. And I think as a result, some of the pure flavor was lost, you know, when you get that oil coating on your tongue. So I thought that I would try this a little differently. I know other people are out there trying to make the cheeseburger spring rolls, but I'm going to do it with an air fryer. I don't know how it's going to work, but we're going to find out together. Let's look at our ingredients. We start, of course, with our ground beef. I'm using ground chuck, a diced onion. This is dill pickle relish. You may or may not add that depending on what you like and what your tastes are. Some yellow mustard. Some oil, you can use the oil of your choice. I'm going to be using some olive oil. And I know most people use like uh, Kraft Singles, American cheese. I'm from Wisconsin, so I'm going to use some cheddar. It's not mild cheddar, it's not sharp, it's somewhere in between, it's a medium cheddar. And of course, the wrappers. Now this says egg roll wrapper, but in the corner it also says for spring rolls. I don't really know what the difference is. I thought the spring rolls had a lighter wrapper and this looks really thin and really light. Now something else I bought were wonton wrappers. And I thought it might be interesting to try to make some mini kind of bite sized spring rolls wrapped like a wonton. So we'll see how that works. Now as far as putting those together, I've seen a lot of things. I've seen people use a little bit of water to hold them together. I've seen people use uh, kind of a flour mixture. I'm going to try just a real light egg wash and see how that works. All of this is an experiment, so you're going to learn along with me. So you can see I had some oil warming up, and we're going to start by sweating our onions. Now, sweating is different from cooking or caramelizing. I really don't want these to get brown. I just want them to get a little translucent. Okay, I don't want them to get too brown. They'll start to caramelize, so I think I'll add the meat now. Okay, that's looking about right. Now we're going to drain off the excess fat. We'll let that drain and cool while we get everything else ready. So now I'm going to slice up the cheese in pretty thick pieces. So one piece of cheese will go on every wrap. Once again, it really depends on how much cheese you want and what kind of cheese you want to put on your spring rolls. I like to have the real Wisconsin cheddar cheese. So that's what we have here. Now some people mix the cheese right in with the mix. I don't think that's necessary because either way you end up with some melted cheese on your spring roll. So you can see we got quite a bit of fat and drippings out of there, so we're going to have some good dry meat to work with. Now you can add whatever you'd like. I'm going to put, I guess, a couple of tablespoons of yellow mustard in here. That's what I'm using. And I'm going to use my dill relish. Put some of that in there and we will just mix that all up really good. And as I said, if you want, at this point, you could sure put a little bit of cheese right in the mix, but I don't see how that would make any difference really since we're going to be rolling up every roll with a piece of cheese. Boy, I wish you could smell this. This really smells good. And now the real test, when we wrap them, 
and this wrap is really very thin. It doesn't seem to me to be that thick pastry type of egg roll, even though it says that on the package. But let's see how this works. I'm going to put down a piece of cheese first. Then we're going to get a little bit of the meat. I'm not sure exactly how much to use. That looks pretty good. I'm going to wrap it over once, fold the left, fold the right, wrap it right up. And I'm going to try just putting a little bit of water on here. And look at that. That seems to hold just fine. So I was wondering if we would need a paste or an egg wash, but the water seems to work just fine. So let's do some more of these. I'm really enjoying the wrapping, very relaxing, and I suppose you could experiment with different amounts of cheese and different amounts of meat. I've got seven of them rolled and I've got a lot of the meat mixture left. So I might not be putting enough in, we'll see. I think I'll stop here. I will fry up a batch. We'll see how they turn out. This is gonna be all experimentation. I don't know how much time, but the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna brush a little coating of olive oil just so we can get a little bit of that fried feel. It won't be greasy, but just enough to brown it. And then I'll put it in for, I think I'll start at about three minutes. Everything's cooked. All we really have to do is melt the cheese and brown the wrapper. So we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to brush a very light coating of oil on these, just enough to help me brown it. And of course, I'm gonna do that on both sides of each roll. And I'm not putting much on here at all. I'm being very conservative with the oil. And we will see when I cook them, if I put on too much or too little. As a matter of fact, I think what I'm going to do here is just carry the oil off that I've already put on the front and just carry that over to the back with most of these. We'll see. Maybe a little more. Okay. You can see it's not much oil at all. You don't need much with an air fryer. Now I'm going to transfer these over to the air fryer basket. And I want to leave a little bit of room between each one. And I don't know if it matters if we keep the cheese side up, but that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to leave a little bit of space in between. And I think I'll, I'll cook them about two minutes on one side and one on the other, and we'll see how that works. So here we go. The rolls go in. I'm going to set the timer. Actually, let's make it two minutes per side and see what that does. We can always adjust it to the next batch. I'm going to keep it at about 375 degrees. And let's see what happens. There's two minutes. So let's take it out. And they really don't look brown yet. So I'm going to go another two minutes on this side and we'll see what happens. Okay, it's done cooking, and that's looking pretty good. They brown nicely. Let's look at the other side. I'm going to flip them over and just let them cook a little more to make sure that they get crispy on both sides. But I'm liking the way it's coming along so far. Okay, I stopped them after an additional about two and a half minutes, and they look pretty good. Let's put them on a plate, let them cool off just a little bit, and see how they taste. Now I said they might have been a tad overcooked, but now that I see them on the plate, they look about perfect. They're nice and lightly browned, and they're crisp, but the real test is how they taste. These are very, very warm right now, so I'm just going to give them a little time to cool off while I'm waiting. 
I'm going to roll the second batch. My neighbor is out back leaf blowing, so I hope it's not making too much noise. But with any food, it's not just what it looks like and how you make it, it's how it tastes. This is still awful warm, so it might be a pretty hot bite, but let's see. Mmm. That is so good. It's crispy. I'm getting just a little bit of the onion and the relish taste. It's not overwhelming. I thought it was a good choice to use the real cheddar cheese because I'm getting that cheese flavor. I think I might put a little more meat in the future ones. Now just to mix things up, I am going to try some with American cheese. Use some Kraft Singles. And we'll see what the difference is. I said I was going to put more meat on, but I think I'm going to be careful about that because it really did, after I ate another one, seem to be about the right amount. And I'm putting one half slice of American cheese on each of these. If you're wondering the amount. Now let's try the wontons. Kind of hard to work with these. I think I'll put a little water around the edge first. And that might do the trick. We'll see. Oh, I like that. I know a wonton's supposed to be twisted, but I kind of like the way that looks. Okay, here's something I just learned if you want to make this go in a really neat package. And I found this out kind of by accident. But when I put down my wonton wrapper, this is what made the difference for me. I have to put the slice of American cheese at that diamond angle. And you'll see why in a minute. So now when we put the meat in here, that's way too much meat, and I bring the edges up, the edges will meet up and they will be square with the piece of cheese. And we pinch that together. You can see it makes a much neater package. So this batch I put in for six minutes. I turned after three at 375 degrees and they are picture perfect. Will you look at that? Still too hot to eat. So I'll set these aside and I'll give you the taste test report in a few minutes. The wontons went in for five minutes, no turning, and they are picture perfect. Just look at that. Oh my goodness, I cannot wait to eat one of these. Very hot right now though, so I'll set them aside for just a few minutes. So while I was waiting for that to cool, I got all the dishes done, the kitchen's cleaned up. The nice thing about using an air fryer is you don't have to get rid of any oil. Now I'm going to try one of these wontons. It's going to be a little different taste because remember this used the American cheese, the Kraft Singles, and I also added a little more mustard in between because, well, I want a little more mustard flavor. So let's see how it is. Oh, that is so good. Let's look at that. I guess you can't see it, it's not focusing. It is delicious. Well, I hope you enjoyed our little venture into the kitchen. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. As always, I encourage you to like and share the videos. If you haven't already, please subscribe, ring that bell icon, so you know when I post new videos. I'm Mark with the Average Me Channel.